Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you even bigger CR-10S. This is a review for enlarged CR-10S4, so stay tuned. When you get a package this size on your bench, you know the thing's about to get serious. Let's open the package and see what we have this time. Alright, almost there, wow, look at the size of this thing, this is enormous, look how small my hand is compared to this enormous 400mm heated bed, crazy, let's cut this foil and free the heated bed and let's, well, let's cut this small box and see the rest of the parts and they all look familiar, like from the CR 10s and here what you get, parts list, warranty card, white PLA filament, frame brackets on both sides, USB cable for connecting to your computer, tape, filament holder, spare nozzle and the spare screws, all necessary tools, filament removable tool, filament runout switch, spare teflon tube, paper clips for holding glass plate, Nozzle cleaning needle, that's nice, USB card with a USB reader, crazy card, there is a Chinese and the English instruction folder, which contain operation instruction, USB driver and the software instruction, reference data, model and the printing. Instruction is a straightforward and it's very easy to follow. There is a support for the Cura and repeated host with the reference settings. For the old plastic molded parts, there is a even STL file, if ever needed, you can print them again. There is a even heated bed cable support upgrade, which is nice and I recommend this upgrade part to install. And now I'm gonna show you how you're gonna set up your printer. So if you own CR10 or CR10 S4 or S5 and you have the latest version of Cura, this applies to you all. So you simply go here to the settings and then you go to the printer and you go add printer and you can choose here other and in this list you just find which creative version you have so I have the CR4 so I will select CR10 S4 and just I click add the printer and it's done and everything is already set up so you can simply open your STL file and slice your model and you can print awesome and now let's build this thing when you assemble the CR10 S4, make sure that you have a closer look on the roller wheels, how they are rolled. So uh, make sure they are not too tight or not too loose. If they are too tight, they can wear pretty quickly, otherwise they can last a very long time. Then you just place up a part of the frame and you get the four screws, two on each side. And you make sure they are nice and tight. Next stop are these frame brackets. One with the switch are going to the left side other without the switch are going to the right side. Some people are more preferred to actually lift the whole printer and put it on the side to actually assemble it, the frame screws, I just prefer to lift a little bit one side and just do the screws. You can do either way. And now we need to connect the control box with the printer. There is a two plugs, they are different so you cannot miss one. The upper one is for the stepper drivers and the down one is for heated bed. AC cable you can add now or later. Next we need to connect the all micro stop switches and all the steppers. This is a Z micro switch and this is a Z left stepper. Next is a X micro switch and the X stepper driver right here. It goes to the extruder right here cable without any label on is for the filament runout switch which you should install right here cables with the label Y on it goes right here and the last one is this stepper driver on the right side for the Z axis and he doesn't need any micro stop switch and the last piece of the puzzle is to installing the glass printing surface you just slide it like this Apply your paper clips, spread them like so, three on the front and three on the back side, and it's all done. 
first start and the Creality 3D flash screen is back, nice. And this is how the CR-10S4 looks when it's fully assembled. This 3D printer is a huge, it barely fits to my 65cm bench table, so make sure that you have a place for it. Now let me give you some specs. CR-10S4 have the build volume of 400 by 400 by 400 mm so it can print a huge 3D objects. Heated bed carriage is now upgraded with the two rails, each one with the six roll bearings to support extra weight and have a better stability. Just like on the CR-10S, there is a two lead screw for the Z-axis, whole frame is mailed for the metal and it feels heavy and robust but in the same time it's simple and clean design. Belts for the Y-axis are now 10mm wide and Y-axis stepper motor are 58mm long with more torque to support extra weight. Both an extruder, X-carriage, hot end, stepper drivers and other components are exactly the same like on the CR-10S. There is only one feature that CR-10S4 have and the CR-10S don't and that is a resuming from out gauge. Meaning if you lost AC power while you print something, you can continue to print when power is restored and with the combination with the filament runout detection, you're pretty much covered when printing the huge 3D objects. Control box on the front has a big graphic LCD with a rotation knob and on the right side there is a place for microSD card, USB plug and the AC voltage switch. And now let's have a look inside the control box. All the wires are nicely isolated. Power supply is 12V 3 amp rated, so that's 360 watt with automatic load fan. On the left side there is a LCD panel, fan that blows directly to the motherboard and on the right side there is a fan and external MOSFET for heated bed, nice. All the stepper drivers on the motherboard and the heated bed MOSFET has the heatsink on it. The brain of the motherboard is the same 80 Mega 2560 microcontroller 8-bit. The software interface is pretty much no change. Beside that flash screen which says Creality 3D now and the Creality website on the main screen, nothing is really changed here, everything is the same like on the CR-10S. But still, I will scroll down and show you guys all the options that is available in this firmware. Rotation knob feels very good and precise and you can easily navigate to the software and change the settings nice and quick. And now it's time for the first test print. My first test print is always the Holocube 20x20mm made for the 0.4mm nozzle. Layer thickness is 0.2mm and the print speed is 25mm a second. Heated bed is on the 55 degrees, hot end is on 190 degrees. This print is a very easy and fast to print and it gives you a clear picture what kind of quality you can expect from the printer. For example, what kind of feed rate you have, do you have over extrusion, under extrusion, what kind of movement you have, are the layers are nice and straight, is there any noise in print, is there any gap and so on. The printer is now done and let's see what kind of quality we get. The test cube look nearly perfect. Very similar to the CR-10S and consider this is even larger 3D printer, I'm very happy that the results are the same. And here is my another test cube but this time I'm using 0.8mm nozzle which give you much higher structural strength and you can double the layer height and save some printing time when printing huge objects. But keep in mind, if you double your nozzle size, you also double amount of filament usage. Now back to the standard 0.4mm nozzle. My next test print is 3D Benji printed at 40mm a second. Temperature that I'm using was 195 degrees on the hot end, heated bed was on 55 degrees. Print speed was the standard 40mm a second and the travel was 100mm a second. As you can see, the Benji looks very impressive. The print quality is near perfect and all the edges and all the details came out very good. Impressive with the first results, I decided to print even bigger Benji. This time I scaled Benji to 300%, I doubled the print speed, travel speed was the same 100mm a second and I printed it. The results again was impressive. The print quality is the perfect. I had no strings, the feed rate was the perfect, all the details again came up very good and I was very impressed with the results. Ok, so so far we have 100% scale Benji, we have 300% scale Benji, but what about the 700 
and 60 scale up Benji. No, I think we don't have that. So I installed the 0.8 mm nozzle, I brought myself 2 kilos of filament and I start to print. After more than 2 days the printing was done and guys this thing looks enormous. This is enormous 3D Benji, I, this is the biggest 3D Benji that I ever printed. So uh, for just for the scale like this is almost 1.8 kilogram heavy Benji <laughs> that I print with this printer which is <laughs> insane. Anyway, uh, for the printing this 3D Benji I had to lower the print speed to only the 30 mm a second and give material proper time to cool down. The temperature was 210 degrees on a hot end, on heated bed was 55 just on the first layer and then I shut it down. When the first pull was finished I just put the new filament in and I clicked to continue and that's it. And all 3D Benji came out perfect. I love the quality, this is awesome results. And for my next test print I decided to print the model from the Mad Hackers on the Thingiverse which is the mascot called Phil Ament. This model of Astronaut actually came up very good as well. I have no detail loss, everything is nice and sharp. Print temperature here was 195, 55, print speed was 40 mm a second, infill 0. Again, awesome results. For my next print I decided to print the headphone stand from MakerBoat. Here the print speed was 60 mm a second, travel was 120. I have increased retraction speed to 80 mm a second to make sure that I will have no strings and my results again are great. This will look very nice on my bench table. My next print is the curved honeycomb vase by Egnot. This also came from the Thingverse and I have used the standard settings for printing this vase. That is 195.55 was the temperature, printing speed was 40 mm a second. And for the most part the vase looking stunning. All the details are very very good, the surface are great and with a little bit of heat gun you can clean the string ins pretty easily. But the more that I was looking into this vase I was starting to find some kind of imperfection, some layers was maybe missing or something and one side of the vase looking very good, on other side was not looking very good and so far in a row. This really bothered me and I was, I was going back to my slicing software and on the Cura 2.62 version it revealed itself. So this model actually has a lot of imperfection if you go into the layer mode you're gonna be able to see it. But oddly enough the latest version of Cura doesn't even show you this. So on the latest version of Cura this face looking perfect but if you print it it will print with imperfection which actually shows in a 2.6.2 version. So problem solved we can move on. For my next test print I decided to print the dragon by Luby from Thingverse who created this awesome model of the dragon. Here I have used only 0.2 mm layer height if you have the more details, go with 0.1 like I already show on my CR10S review and you will have awesome results. For testing the full height of the printer, I decided to print this Moai statue from the Thingverse and I scaled it up to the maximum Z height of the printer which is 400mm. I have printed without any infill, just in two pass. Print speed here was 60mm a second, temperature 195.55 and consider that I was using no infill and no support whatsoever, the quality of this print was very good. Not the best of course, but still pretty decent. 3D Benji though looks very small compared to this both massive 3D prints. And now the speed test. Here what you can see is the CR10S4 printing my favorite mobile stand at 100 mm a second print speed and 200 mm a second travel speed and for suspending the sound and vibration for my hollow IKEA table which resonates like crazy. And with the help of some packaging foam I was able to reach less than 50 dB while printing in a full speed which is very impressive considering the size of this printer and the mass of the heated bed and especially when you're printing something this small with a few curves on it so the, this whole massive bed needs to shift very fast at those curves. So we will see what kind of quality we are going to get. Alright, so this is the close shot of the phone stand that we had just printed at 100mm a second in and out wall speed and 200mm a second travel speed. For the most of the part this print looks very good. 
The only imperfection that actually this print has is the imperfection on the corner which mostly came from my foam that I installed under the whole printer to suspend the noise. But even so, even consider this small imperfection, I think this is a very decent result consider the size of the printer and the mass which was shifting of those corners. And the final test is the bed heat up time. CR10S4 hit 50 degrees in around 12 minutes and the maximum heated bed temperature was only 61 degrees. Not enough for the printing ABS, but if you're installing the heated bed installation material under the heated bed, you can still print PTG. Well guys, what can I say? I own the CR10, I own the CR10S and now I own the CR10S4 and all of them are great. They are working horses and they are made to last. In fact, my old CR10 are still holding very strong even after 7 months of heavy usage. To assemble CR10 S4, it takes less than 3 minutes and thanks to the latest version of Cura, now you can set up this printer basically in 1 minute and start to print. No need to stress about the settings no more. Brilliant. Only one negative side that I have to say about this printer is that you cannot print ABS with it and you have to install heated bed insulation material if you're planning to print with PTG, but if you're printing only with PLA, there is no need to mod anything. And guys, there you have it, that was my full review of Creality CR10 S4 and large version. If you like to order this 3D printer or any other version of CR10, please have a look in the links in the video description. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I catch you next time. Bye bye.